Joe Box, the new generation, is back and coming to you live from the Hard Rock Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. And that means that the man who has basically become the voice of Showbox will be behind the mic once again. But before he's there, he's here with us on the line right now. Steve Farhood joins us. Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Corey. How are you? Not too bad. Well, I guess some people are disappointed that the main event of Showbox this week will not be Ishe Smith and Carlos Molina. I don't think they're disappointed with the card that we're getting nonetheless, but you do have to feel sorry for Carlos Molina, who continues to not be able to get a break as a professional. Yeah, understood. Uh, and, and it's certainly a winnable fight for Carlos Molina. So uh, it, it's a tough break. But you know what? That fight will come back, and probably pretty soon, because it wasn't a major injury that Ishe Smith suffered. It was a cut. And uh, you give a cut enough time to heal, and that fight will still happen. That was supposed to be a world title fight on Showbox, which is a little bit of a rarity, but it kind of points to the direction that Showbox is going in now. Steve, in the past, we've kind of seen a lot of prospects that we hadn't seen on television before. Now Showbox has a little bit of a different look. There's some more established names on there. What do you think of the new direction of the program? Well, I'm not so sure there really is a new direction, because actually the Ishe Smith card, as it initially was put together, was not a Showbox. It was one of those Showtime Championship Boxing Special Editions. Uh, I would have just been the Showbox crew. But when the E.J. Smith fight fell out, we were left with two fights that were going to be on that card that both do in include prospects, um, at least in the case of Mickey Bay, certainly a more advanced prospect. Um, but I think we have prospects on this show. So it's, in that sense, it's a typical Showbox show. Well, let's talk about the main event that we do have now, Mickey Bay taking on John Molina. And I imagine, in a sense, Steve, it's kind of a tough fight for you to call as a color man because Mickey Bay, we know all about his promise and all the ability that he has, but that's kind of all we know. We just have the promise. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, um, if you pointed at a fighter after the 2004 uh, Olympic quest for throw and you said, who's going to make it? Well, Mickey Bay would have been in the top five. I mean, he was that good as an amateur. And he's really, in spurts, been very good as a pro, also been very disappointing at times. And he's had so many roadblocks, so many stops and starts. You know, most recently a, 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 a minor suspension for testing positive for testosterone. Before that, hand injuries. Before that, promotional difficulties. I mean, this guy's been promoted by more people than any fighter I ever remember. So Mickey Bay is 30 years old now. And I think this fight is really critical for him because if he doesn't prove it against Molina moving up in class against the guy who's already fought for the title, and when is he going to prove it? So all the pressure's on Mickey Bay. Well, let's talk about his opponent, John Molina, because after Molina took the loss to Antonio DeMarco, he said it was a fluke. He said that it was maybe an early stoppage, and we took him at, at his word, but then he kind of laid a little bit of an egg against Andre Klimov in his most recent outing. Was he showing us his true colors there, or do you think that Molina has something left for the future? Well, I think Molina's always going to be dangerous because he's a legitimate right-hand puncher. The thing is, from when he was first on Showbox, which goes back to 2009, he's over 2008, I believe, he really hasn't uh, advanced that much as a boxer. So with John Molina, he is what he is. He's not going to change much. He's a very dangerous guy because he can punch with the right hand. When he's behind on points in a fight and seemingly out of it, he's still dangerous. We saw that with Hank Lundy. So, uh, you know, I don't think he's necessarily advanced that much, but he's back with Joe Goosen. Uh, who he's very comfortable with, who's trained him off and on for, since he was a kid. And uh, I, I think that, same as Mickey Bay, this is a fight that's either going to make Molina a fringe contender again or uh, make him a, a high-class and dangerous stepping stone. And he doesn't want to be that at, at, at his age of 30. What's an all-Mayweather promotions event on Showbox this week with Badu Jack in the co-feature as well, Badu Jack, a guy who Floyd Mayweather has been saying is maybe ready for a world title opportunity in the near future, and Badu kind of stopped short of telling me there's something big on the horizon for him when I was talking to him this week, Steve. Is he ready for that kind of step right now? I wouldn't think so. I mean, Badu Jack, 29 years old, so he's a little more, a little older than most prospects. But if he went into a title fight, or if, even if he went into a fight with a, a legit top 10 contender right now, that would be a huge step up in class. I mean, He's looked decent, but not overwhelming in a couple of his most re recent fights. So I think that might be a little bit of hype coming from Mayweather Promotions. Um, he's fighting for uh, Ennis, his toughest opponent to date. A guy that's not easy to fight because Ennis is a careful fighter. Boxer doesn't take a lot of chances. But I think we have to see what Badu Jack does in this fight before we even 
consider anything close to, to a, a world title fight. The one thing that isn't hype that you couldn't just make up that, that I've noticed out of Badu is he is a very good and a dedicated body puncher, and that only gets better when you work with a guy like Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Exactly right. It's the right trainer for the right fighter. Uh, Badu Jack's an interesting fighter because, you know, he's from Sweden. There have not been a lot of <laughs> fighters from Sweden since Ingemar Johansson. We know that. As a matter of fact, boxing, professional boxing for a long time was, was illegal and banned in Sweden. And also, Badu Jack fought from Gambia, which is where his father is from in the Olympics in uh, 2008. So he's a very interesting fighter. Uh, very good boxer, you know, he has the amateur pedigree, and uh, this is a real good test for him, because as I said, Ennis is a fighter who uh, who has only one loss, that was by a majority decision, and, and it's, a, it's a fair test at this point for Badger Jack, and I definitely step up. Well, you mentioned Farah Ennis, his opponent, and you said that he can be very careful at times and, and tough to deal with in that sense. The guys who have given Badu trouble so far in his career, guys like Don Mouton, have been pressure guys who throw a lot of punches. Is Ennis' style to his advantage against Badu Jack in this bout, or will that work against him, especially given that he's facing the home fighter, so to speak, in Badu Jack? Well, that's an interesting question, Corey, because really that's the, the uh, key to this fight. For Ryan, Ennis is going to have to fight a little bit outside of his comfort zone. He knows that. He's spoken about it. His dad yesterday at the, uh, at the Mayweather gym during a little mini workout for the press said that Ennis has to be aggressive, has to try to back Badu Jack up. So if it's the same old for our Ennis, be careful not throwing a lot of punches. I don't think he wins the fight. He's going to have to fight aggressively. That is not always in his makeup, and we'll see if he can you know, if he can change his style a little bit for this fight. Uh, if he doesn't, I don't think he, he wins. Well, I don't think a Mayweather Promotions or Money Team fighter has ever lost on television since uh, Cornelius Lightning Lock back in the day, so we'll see if they can keep the streak alive. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, you know, these, I'll tell you one thing that was interesting yesterday. We, we went to Mayweather Gym and talking to Mickey Bates, talking to Badger Jack, a lot of these fighters, some of the younger ones as well, they just love Floyd as a promoter. And I think the reason is Floyd is, is the equivalent of what you'd say is a fighter's promoter. You know, he's not interested in, in the past baggage these guys have. He lets them fight. He matches them fairly tough, I think tougher than some promoters. And uh, he gives second chances to guys who need them, like, like that Mickey Bates. So uh, I was very impressed with the fact that they think so much of Floyd. And, of course, when, it, when a promotional outfit gets a little hot, there's a snowball effect. More and more and more and more fighters, good young fighters, come to that gym and come to that promotional firm. And that's what's happening now with Mayweather Promotions, and we'll see if it continues. Well, I'm sure he'll pick up plenty more fighters, because what's not attractive about celebratory yacht trips in Miami? I'd be on board. There you go. And, and you know what? You, you sign with Floyd, you're going to get TV dates. That's obvious. <laughs> you know, he's got a relationship with... Uh, with Showtime, uh, he has a long term. You know, they're going to be pay per view fights, and it's exposure for these guys. And you know, here we are doing a Mayweather promotion show Friday uh, tonight, so it'll be very interesting. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what his two guys have to offer on Showbox: The New Generation. Thanks for joining us again, Steve. My uh, my pleasure. I hope to come on again.